I got my cords all twisted up. I did a good one. Can't even tell how I am supposed to go to get it untwisted. <laughs> well, we're going to cheat and do it the other way. Here. And I'll say good morning to the people on the video first, since I've got you hooked up first. I was busy talking, so I didn't get everything set up the way I should have. All right. There. Good morning to everyone out there. Um, Lucy Arian is having a birthday tomorrow. That's a cool thing. And we have a couple anniversaries this week. On Tuesday, Dan and, Dan and Jan Howe have an anniversary. And on Saturday the 24th is Nick and Victoria Lechtenberg's anniversary. So happy anniversary to all of the people that are there on those peoples. We'll be celebrating the, having the celebration of our 135th anniversary here um, next week. Worship will be at nine. We'll have a meal following the service. We might need a little bit of of uh, fellowship time, waiting for everyone to get everything set up, but we should have most everything under control, I think, by the time that it's time, so everything should work out well. We invite you and everyone to come and celebrate with us as we have our 135th birthday party here. Um, <clears throat> later on in October, there's a Monday that we'll be having flu shot clinic available here and other than that I don't think there's too much else going on everybody's just kind of getting ready to set up for the anniversary party so that's taking front priorities right now um I don't think there's any other announcements at least none that I know of so we shall begin let us prepare our hearts and our minds for worship Please stand for the confession and forgiveness. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. You may be seated and we sing our first hymn, Gather Us In. <coughs> Brought here to you in the 
light of this day. Gather us in the lost and forsaken, gather us in the blind and the lame. Call to us now and we shall awaken, we shall arise at the sound of our Continue on page 203. <clears throat> the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. <clears throat> Have mercy on us, Lord, and hear our solemn prayer. We saves us from despair. Have mercy on us, Christ, and wash away our sin. 
near to all. Jesus Christ with God the Spirit in the Father's splendor bright. For the peace that we inherit, glory be to God on high. We pray the prayer of the day together. God among us, we gather in the name of your Son to learn love for one another. Keep our feet from evil paths. Turn our minds to your wisdom and our hearts to the grace revealed in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading for today comes from the eighth chapter of Amos. Hear this, you that trample on the needy and bring to ruin the poor of the land, saying, when will the new moon be over so that we may sell grain and the Sabbath so that we may offer wheat for sale? We will make the ephah small and the shekel great and practice deceit with false balances, buying the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals and selling the sweepings of the wheat. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, surely I will never forget any of their deeds. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The psalm for today is Psalm 113. You may respond with the bold print verses. Hallelujah! Give praise, you servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Let the name of the Lord be blessed from this time forth forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its going down, let the name of the Lord be praised. The Lord is high above all nations, God's glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God, who sits enthroned on high, but stoops to behold the heavens and the earth? The Lord takes up the weak out of the dust and lifts up the poor from the ashes, enthroning them with the rulers, with the rulers of the people. The Lord makes the woman of a childless house to be a joyful mother of children. Hallelujah. The second reading comes from the second chapter of 1 Timothy. First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for everyone for kings and all who are in high positions, so that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and dignity. This is right and is acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God. There is also one mediator between God and humankind, Christ Jesus himself human, who gave himself a ransom for all. This was attested at the right time. For, I was a, for this I was appointed a herald and an apostle. I am telling the truth, I am not lying. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and in truth. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel. <clears throat> Alleluia, Lord and Savior, open now your saving word. Let it be like fire within us, speak until our hearts are stirred. Alleluia, Lord, we sing for the good news that you bring. The Holy Gospel according to the 16th chapter of Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus said to the disciples, There was a rich man who had a manager, and charges were brought to him that this man was squandering his property. So he summoned him and said to him, What is this that I hear about you? Give me an accounting of your management, because you cannot be my manager any longer. Then the manager said to himself, What will I do now that my master is taking the position away from me? I'm not strong enough to dig, and I'm ashamed to beg. 
I have decided what to do so that when I am dismissed as manager, people may welcome me into their homes. So summoning his master's debtors one by one, he asked the first, how much do you owe my master? He answered a hundred jugs of olive oil. He said to him, take your bill, sit down quickly and make it 50. Then he asked another, and how much do you owe? And he replied, a hundred containers of wheat. He said to him, take your bill and make it 80. And his master commended the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly. For the children of this age are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than are the children of the light. And I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of dishonest wealth, so that when it is gone, they may welcome you into the eternal homes. Whoever is faithful in a very little is faithful also in much, and whoever is dishonest in a very little is dishonest also in much. If then you have not been faithful with the dishonest wealth, who will entrust to you the true riches? And if you have not been faithful with what belongs to another, who will give you what is your own? No slave can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. So I was going to do a children's sermon this morning, and I was going to read the story from, the, from their Bible, and it talks the same story, of course. But it also says that he calls him not trustworthy. The master calls the manager that. Show me how much of my money that you have been taking from me, and then I want you to leave. The worker, the manager, was not honest. He was trying to serve the rich man and himself. He was trying to be greedy. And we were going to talk a little bit about being greedy and how what it is to be a follower of Jesus and therefore sharing and serving and being faithful and f as we know that we should be in following the ways of Jesus. And then we were going to talk a little bit about being, whether we are, are we greedy or do we share? Is it easier to share or is it easier to be greedy? And sometimes it would, of course, depend on what it was. If it's just your color crayons that you're sharing with your sibling, then it's not so hard to share and be nice. But if you end up with a, a present or somebody gives you something, then you want to be greedy and call it only your own. And it's very difficult sometimes to not want to be greedy. Grace, love, and peace to you from God our Father, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and the Holy Spirit, our Enlightener, who keeps us on the one true faith, in the one true faith. Amen. So did you get a little bit confused about this story today? Even in the summary of the celebrate, it calls this a curious story. It's definitely curious, for sure. It's very confusing. So to try to understand this parable in a little bit better context of Luke's world, it might help to have a little mini course in the economics of how it was when the Romans ruled and occupied Galilee in that first century. Rich landlords and rulers were like loan sharks. They used exorbitant interest rates to amass and, and get more land and more things and more of whatever it was that they wanted besides the land, to, and therefore disinherit all the peasants around them of all of their family lands, which was in direct violation of the biblical conventional law, but they didn't Romans didn't believe in the way that the Bible was written anyway, so that's kind of how it all went about here. So this is what it is, is that the rich man is actually one of the Roman people, and the, who knows who the manager is? We don't really know for sure. He knows, though, that probably he's doing things that are kind of sneaky and underhanded, but he's doing it because of his greed, and he wants to be rich too. So the rich man, along with his manager, 
then are both exploiting those desperate peasants who live in the land. What I discovered in, in, our, tech, in our messages at times that we were talking about different things with the other pastors is that there are so many different varieties of words used during this weird parable. Um, but the one from the Message Bible struck me as the one that I could understand the best. And the Message Bible is really just a, um, a paraphrase or a contempor- uses more contemporary language. And maybe that's why it kind of was able to sink into my brain a little bit more. So here's the same gospel written as it is paraphrased in the Message Bible. Jesus said to his disciples, there once was a rich man who had a manager. He got reports that the manager had been taking advantage of his position by running up huge personal expenses. So the man called the manager in and said, what's this I hear about you? You're fired, and I want a complete audit of your books. The manager said to himself, oh, what am I going to do? I've lost my job as manager. I'm certainly not strong enough for a laboring job, and I'm much too proud to beg. Oh, I have a plan. And then when I'm definitely turned out into the street, people will take me into their houses. The manager put this plan into place. So as he went about it, he called in the people who were in debt to his master. He asked how much each owed, And each one, then, he had them reduce that amount that was owed to the master. But here's the surprise. The master then praised the crooked manager. Why? Because he knew how to look after himself. Street-wise people are smarter in this regard than law-abiding citizens. They're on the constant alert, always looking for an angle surviving by their wits. And Jesus wants us to be smart in this same way, but for the reasons that are right. Using every adversity to stimulate us to creative survival, concentrating our attention on the bare essential so that we can live, so that we can really live, not just complacently get on, go on by, with good behavior. Jesus went on then to make all those comments about being honest in small and big things, being crooked in small and big things, and no one can serve two bosses as one will either hate one or not the other and vice versa. And we cannot serve both God and money, possessions, or things. So what we're learning here, it sounds like, is that the gospel is written in such a way that Jesus is using this strange story, this parable to explain the use of our money, and it's a good test of the depth of our commitment to following Jesus. So what we're hearing is our money belongs to God, not to us, and we're to use our resources wisely. Money can be used for good or evil, and we're encouraged to use ours for good. Money definitely has a lot of power, but we're to use it carefully and thoughtfully. And when we live by God's priorities, we will use our money and our resources in a way that will grow our faith, not to earn God's grace, because that comes to us freely, but by being an example to others, just as Jesus is our example, by the unselfish use of our possessions, including our money, to help others will be the result of God's grace coming to us and then our passing it along to others. And by making wise use of the financial opportunities that we have to help people, by telling others about Jesus as our Savior who died and was resurrected for us, giving us eternal life much like we do. We give to world hunger. We help the food bank. We help people with things along the way that when someone needs us or needs help, we find a way to help. 
And even though money has the power to take God's place in our allegiance and in our serving and in our lives, we know because of that, it can, because it can become our master, we have to be aware. Wealth promises security and happiness and contentment and power and control. But wealth has never, ever delivered on these promises Oh, sure, maybe in the short run, possibly you can have money for the first for some times. But on the eternal span of of the of a lifetime, not so much. Great fortunes can be made and lost in an instant, just like that. Lasting satisfaction, however, eternal life, peace of mind, and security comes only from God. God provides us these things, and we as faithful followers of God use the gifts that we're given as responsible stewards of creation to help the needy with food for those who don't have enough to eat, with clothing or shelter for those who have such need, to provide to all from our abundance. We are your servants, Lord. We share in the burdens of those around us. Help us to continue to carry on with your cross, not as greedy people, but as faithful people, faithful followers, those who share. Amen. And it's, Lord Jesus, you shall be my song. kind of tunes into the third verse this week. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, you shall be my song as I journey. I'll tell everybody about you I journey. Lord Jesus, I'll praise you as long as I journey. May all of my joy be a faithful reflection of you. May the earth and the sea Jesus, I'll praise you as long as I journey. As long as I live, Jesus, make me your servant to carry your cross and to share all your burdens and tears. For you see, make me your servant. I fear in the dark and the doubt of my journey, but courage will come with the sound of your steps by my side. And with sing to your dawn at the end of our journey. Please stand as together with the whole Church of Christ we profess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, 
I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As scattered grains of wheat are gathered together into one bread, so let us gather our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of God's good creation. <clears throat> God, our Father, you keep your church in faith and truth. Accompany those preparing for baptism or affirmation of baptism. Enlighten preachers, teachers, seminarians, and all those who share your good news with the world. God of grace, hear our prayer. Divine teacher, you instruct your children to be responsible stewards of your creation. Show us how best to care for the earth and its resources and guide those who work to develop sustainable practices. God of grace, hear our prayer. Ruler of the nations, you direct those in authority. Give leaders wisdom and compassion so that all may live in peace. Inspire public servants to follow the example of courageous leaders and safeguard the dignity of each person. God of grace, hear our prayer. Helper of the needy, you lift up those who are oppressed. Breathe justice into economic and social systems that perpetuate poverty and hunger. Sustain food ministries, clothing banks, and emergency shelters. God of grace, hear our prayer. Sustainer and giver of life, you bless this congregation with abundance. Instruct us in the proper and faithful use of wealth and resources that we may share generously. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of glory, you gather your saints around your throne. Keep us thankful for the witness of those who have gone before us and bring us with them to the heavenly feast that has no end. God of grace, hear our prayer. Gathered together in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, gracious God, we offer these and all our prayers to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all and also with you. Please remain standing as we receive our offering. Let us pray. Gracious God, in your great love, you richly provide for all our needs. Make of these gifts a banquet of blessing and make us ready to share with all in need. Through Jesus Christ, who sets the table and welcomes all people. Amen. Gathered now into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the blessing. The God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. And we sing, Take my life and let it be. Take my life that I may be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of Thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for Thee. Take my life that I may be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my silver and my gold, not a might would I withhold. Take my intellect and use every power as Thou shalt choose. Take my life that I may be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my voice and let me sing, always only for my King. Take my lips and let them be filled with messages from Thee. Take my life that I may be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my will and make it Thine, it shall be no longer mine. Take my heart, it is Thine own, it shall be Thy royal throne. Take my life that I may be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Go in peace and let Christ walk beside you on the journey. Thanks be to God. Thank <laughs> you.